morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, we want to uh, talk about a number of things this morning, but um, in particular, we uh, continue to watch what's happening with this impeachment process. Um, it is, uh, by any definition, a process that is an attempt in secret in the basement of the Capitol to uns unseat uh, a duly elected president of the United States. It's unlike anything we've ever seen before. We know what a constitutionally serious impeachment process would look like. Uh, we saw that happen both with President Nixon and with President Clinton. Um, this is not that. This is not a search for the truth. This is not a situation where you've got uh, the majority, the Democrats, who are upholding their constitutional duty and trying to get to the truth. Uh, this is a situation where they know the outcome that they want, and they have concocted a process in secret uh, without the president's counsel there, without the ability to cross-examine witnesses, uh, without the ability for the American people to see the evidence that they're collecting. Uh, it really is uh, an appalling miscarriage of justice, a miscarriage of their constitutional duties and obligations. Uh, and it is something that the American people are going to long remember. It's a dangerous thing for our republic to be uh, in a, a process where uh, the votes of 63 million Americans uh, are being nullified in an attempt by the Democrats to unseat President Trump, driven by their hatred for this president uh, and their partisan determination um, to try to do what they can't do at the ballot box. Uh, in order to talk in some more detail about the kinds of abuses that we're seeing, about what we're seeing in the committee, we have two Republican members uh, of the Intel Committee with us this morning uh, to give you some more specifics on what's happening and what's not happening. And uh, with that, I'd like to turn things over to the gentlewoman from New York, Ms. Stefanik. Thank you, Chairwoman Cheney. Um, Elise Stefanik, I represent New York's 21st Congressional District. I'm in my third term. This is my second term on Intelligence Committee. Um, I wanted to echo what Liz mentioned. This has been a closed door, unfair, and unprecedented process. Tens of millions of Americans should know that their member of Congress has had no access to any of the transcripts. In fact, no member has been able to read every transcript, and let me tell you why. There have only been two transcripts that have made available two Intelligence Committee members. The first is Kurt Volker's, the second is Ambassador Yovanovitch's. We were notified this week by, at our staff level that they would only be printing one transcript for every single member, whether you're on the committee or not, and you would have to read it with a member of Democratic staff. That is unprecedented and unfair. Again, this is coming from I sit on the Intelligence Committee. I strongly believe that every member of Congress should have access to every single transcript because the question begs, how are these members talking about this in their district? How are they so sure the Democratic support of impeachment when they don't have access to the very evidence in this closed process? And I also believe that every transcript should be released to the American public. We continue to see press reports of cherry-picked excerpts or portions from transcripts. That's breaking the rules, but I believe that this should be transparent. It's not a political game. This is a very, very serious process, and uh, Chairman Schiff is unfit to chair the Intelligence Committee, and these are many of the process reasons why. And I will turn it over to my colleague, Mike Turner. Uh, thank you, Elise. There is nothing more extreme and or a greater threat to democracy than when Congress undertakes an impeachment process. It is absolutely uh, essential that to preserve democracy that we have an impeachment process that is open and transparent where the American public can see what is occurring. And here today we have an impeachment process that's occurring in secret without any real action that is even happening from the House. The House has not take action, has taken action to open an impeachment process, nor has any committee, nor has the House taken a vote for the process to be undertaken in secret. We have an unbelievable abusive process that is occurring. But in addition to it being secret, where the American public does not have the ability to watch the witnesses or those who are questioning them, each member, in the manner in which they have structured this, is restrained, who does have access to the information, from telling anyone anything that's happening behind closed doors. I am prevented from going to my constituency in Ohio and telling them what's happening behind closed doors in the Intelligence Committee, of which I'm a member. As the media reports news leaks of what has occurred, many of which are absolutely inaccurate and false, members of Congress have no ability to stand in front of you and give you the correct information so that you can report it. 
I do not believe that we should be left to wait for transcripts or that it, the American public should be depending upon leaks from those who have undertaken this process. Everyone should be, have the opportunity to see every aspect of this proceeding. Iran-Contra, Richard Nixon's impeachment process, the Bill Clinton impeachment process, all happened where the American public, not just members of Congress, um, the American public had the opportunity to witness every aspect of it. As Elise had said earlier, what's also troubling is that even though I can, as a, a member of the Intelligence Committee, complain about the restrictions on my ability to report what I know, many of members of Congress know nothing because the way that this is being conducted, uh, members are not giving access to the hearings themselves. They're not given access to the transcripts. Many of those who are walking through these halls who are telling you they are either for or against impeachment have no access to the information that's necessary for them to come to that conclusion. Uh, this is a process being done in secret and is absolutely a violation, I believe, of both the constitutional uh, provisions but also the rights of the American public. Uh, and now I'd like to introduce uh, Steve Scalise, who not only is our whip but is an American hero. Steve. Thank you. I want to share the alarming concerns of my colleagues, Mr. Turner and Mr. Fonsick, uh, talking about what is happening behind closed doors. Uh, everybody in America should be alarmed that right now, here in Congress, there is an impeachment inquiry going on to the President of the United States, and the public is not allowed to see it, the press is not allowed to see it, and members of Congress that aren't on the relevant committees are not even allowed in the room or able to see the transcripts of what's going on over there. Uh, every American ought to be alarmed that they're literally trying to reverse the results of the 2016 election behind closed doors in secret, run by a chairman, Adam Schiff, who has a very, very concerning track record uh, of telling the truth. And you can go back to uh, the Mueller investigation. Uh, for 22 months, you had Chairman Schiff running around saying he had more than circumstantial evidence that there was collusion with Russia. And at the end of the report, you saw the, the Mueller report, there was no collusion. And Schiff never showed any evidence. He's never come forward with this evidence that he ran around for over a year and a half claiming that he had, and instead he just moved on to the next baseless charge against the president. Because from day one, their intention was to impeach the president regardless of fact. In fact, you've got dozens of members of Congress who have come out in support of impeachment and can't tell you one high crime or misdemeanor, which is the standard in the Constitution. And they haven't even been able to have access to the transcripts themselves in many cases. And yet they say they're for impeaching a president of the United States. Uh, it's, it's very alarming that you're seeing this going on. And not only is the press denied access, in many cases, the only information they're able to get are leaks, as it's been pointed out before, uh, that have been undermined in their own credibility because they've been proven baseless later on. And so you have a drip drab of leaks that come out over and over again, many of which have been disproven. And that's the only method we have of finding out information on a movement to impeach a president of the United States. Uh, this is a mockery of the process. Uh, people across the country should be alarmed that this is going on in secret behind closed doors. Uh, you can't even, the, the majority leader, when I asked him last week, are we in an in impeachment inquiry? Wouldn't even give a straight answer to that. Should be a very simple question. It's only happened three times in the history of our country where an impeachment inquiry into a president of the United States happened. And in every case, the full Congress voted first. Uh, there were rules established of fairness uh, so that you could at least see what was going on. That's not happening right now. There's never been a vote of Congress. There are no fairness issues. In fact, the majority leader calls it a fair process. And I questioned him on it, and I said, so you're going to call it a fair process when members of Congress can't get access to the information, the press can't get access to the information, the only witnesses called are witnesses that are called by the majority. The minority has no rights to call witnesses or to subpoena. Uh, and you're going to call that a fair process? That doesn't pass the smell test with people across the country who are growingly appalled that this is happening behind closed doors in secret. And to quote the lead author of the articles of impeachment on the Democrat side, he said, the president will get reelected if we don't impeach him. You don't impeach a president because you don't like the results of an election. The American people ought to be the ones that decide who the president is, not Speaker Pelosi and Adam Schiff behind closed doors in secret. And with that, I'm going to bring up 
the Minority Leader, Kevin McCarthy. Thank you, Steve. Good morning. I appreciate uh, our two members from the Intel Committee spending time with us. As you know, the Democrats have written this script. They hate this president, and they are abusing their power to undo an election. Think about what impeachment means, the removal of a duly elected person. It doesn't matter what party you belong to. It doesn't matter what your philosophy is. Fairness is one of the most powerful words in the English vocabulary. We look out of the Capitol and we see the Supreme Court. We look a statue of a woman blindfolded with a scale because we believe in fairness. We believe in due process. But there is one place that has changed that believes in the abuse of power and not in due process, and that's in Pelosi's house. History of this Congress believed no matter what decision you came to, in the end, you wanted to make sure it was fair because you're breaking the fabric of democracy. We're at a press conference, but I would love to be at a press conference <clears throat> with every Democrat that already supports impeachment. Tell me the one thing that you have read to support impeachment. Because they won't let you read the transcripts. They want to leak certain items. They don't want to have it in Judiciary Committee where the American public can see it like we've done it before. They don't want to have you vote on an inquiry because they don't believe in a fair process. Why do they want to do this? Because they've already written the script of how to have the outcome. You know the things that we are not doing? Do you recall just when Adam Schiff said that he wished he knew who the whistleblower was, that he had great concern that the administration was going to block a whistleblower from coming to committee, that this whistleblower in this phone call that there was quick pro quo. Now not only all of Americans, but all the world knows what's in that transcript of that phone call. There was no quick pro quo. We now also know to all of Americans that Adam Schiff lied to us one more time. One more time. There are two members today that are sitting on the Intel Committee. Before they were put on the Intel Committee, I, I interviewed them. I wanted to know, do they have the integrity to be able to serve there? Because these members who serve on the Intel Committee, they need to read certain selective, secret memos that others cannot have. So when they speak to members, they better have the integrity to tell the truth. But we watched the chairman of the committee stand before all the nation and read what he hoped was in the script of that phone call. He was such a good liar that the Speaker of the House believed him. Speaker Nancy Pelosi believed him on and defended him on national television with George Stephanopoulos. And when he looked into the cameras on MSNBC and was asked the question, do you know who the whistleblower is? No, he wished he could. And what do we find out later? He knows who the whistleblower is. The staff met with him. When the staff advised him to go to the inspector general, the whistleblower no, never told the inspector general that he met with the staff. Why? Because it wasn't in the script that the Democrats wrote. So the question before any Democrat who supports impeachment, state where in the transcript that there's quick pro quo. Tell me what you have read that brought you to this conclusion because nobody in Congress can read them. They're all in secret. We are better than this. We are better than this as a nation. We are better than this as a House of Representatives. What's even worse about all of this going on, what we are not doing, what we are not passing. There are 22 legislative days left in this year, and we're living under a continuing resolution when we have an unsafe world. Are they going to move the funding for the troops or the pay raise for them? What about United States, Mexico, and Canada agreement? Our two biggest traders before we sit down and negotiate with Xi Jinping. Would we not be stronger as a nation to have that agreement done? Mexico has already approved it. Canada's waiting. They've already had an election now, last night. But there's one person that has the power to bring it forth, the Speaker of the House. Too enthralled in impeachment to do anything else. What about surprise billing? What about extending flood insurance? What about the things the American public expects us to do? 
And what are all the things that the Intel community, c Committee should be doing right now with Iran, with North Korea, with Syria and others that they are not doing because they're more enthralled with the script they're reading and trying to create of impeachment of something they cannot find. It is so powerful, it has changed Democrats' mind in America today, whether you're innocent till proven guilty. Congressman Max Rose now believes you're guilty till you're proven innocent when it comes to the President of the United States. Is the hatred that great? Are they that upset about an election? We're only 13 months away before our next election. I think the American public thinks they should put this impeachment aside, let them make a decision, and actually do the work that the American public expects us to do. Last night, we had a vote on the floor about censuring Adam Schiff. Three times he's lied to us and the American public. The question should be to all the Democrats who thought that issue should be tabled. What standards do you hold to your chair? It's okay to lie? Because I guess you now accept it. <clears throat> I guess that's part of the script too. We are better than this, and I believe they are better in it as well. Let's go up to questions. Mr. Lewis? Yes, sir. This morning, the president uh, sent out a tweet. The five of you have all been out here, you know, kind of deriding the, the process that Democrats have held. The president also did in his tweet, but he went a little further and said that, quote, all Republicans must remember what they are witnessing here, a lynching. Do you condemn that terminology? That's not the language I would use. It's very clear that what <coughs> the Democrats are doing here does not go across, does not have due process. It's not fair in the process. It's not something that this House has done ever in the past. Think about it for a moment. A Democrat-controlled House, a Speaker, set forth a process in dealing with President Nixon. A Republican Speaker set forth a fair process dealing with President Clinton. Now we even change the rules in the Intel community, Committee that you can't even read the transcripts if you're on the committee unless the big hand of the majority party is there to witness you. Never has anyone been treated that way. Let known not have due process. Not have, in President Clinton's case, his attorneys were there to able to cross-examine. They were able to put a witness list together. Both sides had subpoena power. None of that is available today. So how could you even trust it and why would you even go forward? Yes, sir. I don't agree with that language. It's pretty simple. Why? Yes. Uh, Mr. Leader, you talked about the three lies that you believe uh, Adam Schiff has told. Independent groups have counted up thousands of lies that the president has told as recently as this week. Do those lies concern you as well? I always have concerns when people lie. Most importantly, when I look at a chairman of a committee, that the members in Congress do not get to see, do not get to read the secret memos, the exclusive information that those on the committee have, to have forth that a Speaker of the House wouldn't wait 48 hours to see a transcript, but decided we were going to be in an impeachment inquiry. When the moment of time for the nation to watch, the chair of that committee sat and made up a transcript that he wished had been in that call. That when he sat, how do many times do I know his staff met with this whistleblower? Did he meet with the whistleblower? Does the speaker know or talk about this before she made this decision? And he told the American public, and he was such a convincing liar, that the Speaker of the House on national television with George Stephanopoulos argued with him that said, no, that was true. It put the jeopardy of our nation. It broke the fabric of who we were. Could you entrust him to go further? And now she put him in charge of this impeachment where the rest of the nation cannot see and members of Congress cannot read. Members one after the other go down to the committee and are denied. The committee members themselves are denied unless his own staff looks at you when you're doing it. When have we ever empowered somebody so far in a such corrupt manner to allow that to happen? So no, yes, I stand by the censure movement and I wish others would have stood up to it at the same time. That's not what I asked you. Again. That's not what I asked about, though. Would your job be easier if the president adhered to the truth more often? I think the president has done a tremendous job. Would my job be easier that the economy is so strong because this president has been able to turn it around? Is our job as a nation safer because he's helped rebuilding the military? Is, the is America stronger because more people are working today? 
Yeah, the president deserves credit for that. Adam Schiff deserves to be censured based upon lying to the American public time and again when nobody else can read what he's able to read. Anything else? All right, thank you all.